All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, making sure everything is on. You know, we had some time off to recover and recuperate. So by now, you should have watched the foundations class where we read the whole entirety of the law. And then you should have gone through the first judgment. So we started from Exodus chapter 19 and we went all the way through the basics of the law. And we went back and read from the beginning and saw how the most high taught and the practice of the exercising of his judgment with the first ones and the first judgments of the four first fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, right? By the time we get to the fifth father, which is Moses, we have already arrived back at the foundation, the beginning, the law, okay? So if you've gone through that and you're here now because we've invited you, then you're here to begin the process of grooming. You're here to accept the advice now from King Solomon from his hidden book. Now this hidden book, you don't have to worry about buying it in the store. If you have the Targums of Proverbs, you have the hidden book in front of you. Only thing I'm going to do now is we're going to become very straightforward and very practical, and we're going to change the enigmatic sayings into direct instructions, which we are going to do. Okay? This is a life or death test for you. Should you fail? Should you quit? Should you not accept the words of this teachings, you will die. Of course, there are five steps to gaining any new information. The first step is becoming aware, right? So now we're going to begin to read the book and extrapolate the instructions to make you aware of what it is you're getting into, right? (laughs) After the first reading, once we've read through the first 31 chapters of this book and we've gone through all the sayings, you will have awareness. Now, awareness leads to knowledge, but knowledge is not only being aware but going through the experience and actually following the advisement in your daily, everyday life. So to getting into knowing it, right? So you're going to have intelligence. Awareness is just the intelligence of it, the information. Then we're going to actually practice it here. For that, you're going to need to sell all your things, Come with the money and you're going to reinvest all of that money here. We're going to give you wisdom and we're going to give you the knowledge from the most high of the most high. And it will gain you leadership. Those who accept this teaching and walk in it with the fullness of instruction and guidance will obtain leadership. Okay, the foundation of this teaching is loyalty and integrity to the house of Solomon, to me, his son, the teacher of his instruction. So this book is actually a letter and a book of instruction to me to share with you. Now, These are not sayings. So you're going to get sayings, 
but they're actually instructions. So we're going to take the saying and I'm going to tell you what the instructions are. Everybody uh, ready? Yes. Proverbs chapter one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're going to now unseal, unlock the hidden scroll, right, of the seal of Solomon. And I'm going to unseal it, unlock it for you. This book is under the authority of the seal of Solomon, who was king over all Israel. For on account of prophet Solomon, king of Israel, and his covenant, and those who love him, those who love Solomon, and accept his correction and instruction, they will be made kings, rulers, chiefs, judges, all anointed in righteousness. So the proof of the anointing in righteousness is in education, training, and deeds thereafter, not oil. Right? So we read in the law, you must be anointed by the word. Right? Yes, sir. The oil is a symbolic representation after you have received the instructions and followed it faithfully all the way through up until the day you die. Okay? If you are of the children of Israel, this will extend your life. The seed of Isaac, the Itzaki, you will extend your life indefinitely. If you are not, it still will extend your days according to the measure the Most High has allotted to you. Okay? <clears throat> so there are some criteria that you're going to need to meet. So you have to first complete the lawful study and the first class of judgment. So you have to have your foundation and the beginnings of judgment to even start here. You have to display integrity. Integrity is doing what is right in secret chambers, right? Not just while everybody's around and looking. It's an all the time, 24 hour, when I wake up, when I sleep kind of thing. And display loyalty to the appointed heads. Right? Right now, there is myself. And there is the upcoming, the one that is already appointed to be high priest, Ali. Okay? Everybody else is walking in the process. Everybody. Okay? And you can say, how did that happen? And that goes to the fourth criteria. They were asked, invited, or they inquired diligently seeking. So I went making an investigation. I sought it myself diligently, and so did Ali. So in seeking diligently of our own, accepting it and walking in it, while everything was peaceful, right? When everybody was making money and getting the bag and doing what they thought was best for them, we sought this instruction and accepted the training then. Okay? And which leads to the fifth criteria. And has walked in the law in the land and abstained from breaking any of the laws keeping all of this advice. Okay, so for those who 
understand these things. If not, if you don't even understand this much, go back, start the video over, get you a pen and a piece of paper, a notepad, and you're going to write down what I'm saying. You're going to look up the words in the dictionary to gain the knowledge. You're going to have to do this study with intelligence. You're going to have to be very intelligent about accepting what I'm telling you. For those who seek Solomon's wisdom, will find it. Okay? And that was me. Okay? So to my son, he says, if you seek me, you will find me. And he will sit vigil at the threshold of the uh, at the threshold and guard his doorpost. So the doorpost of Solomon is the throne room of the kingship of Israel. Right? Solomon sat on the throne. One of his sons will come, sit in his chair, and guard the doorpost. For all those who wish to gain wisdom to come to him, there is a proverb. Find a wise man, right? And wear out his doorpost. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay? Learn from him consistently. Learn the what to do and the how to do. Okay? He who finds Solomon's wisdom finds life and favor from Allah. Whoever sins against Solomon's instruction damages himself. And those who hate Solomon, his wisdom, and his seed, who sits at the doorpost, loves death. How do you express hate? You simply just don't take the advice. You simply don't follow the instruction. You dislike me or anything that I do or say for your own personal reasons. All those people who fall into these categories love death. Excuse me, Rabbi Shea. Mm -hmm. When you say seek knowledge, Exactly what does that entail? Because a lot of times some consider what by them reading that they're seeking knowledge. And apparently that doesn't seem to be the case. Reading is gathering information. That's it. <laughs> to gain knowledge is to gain not only the information, but you must have practical application. It shows that you know because you do. Mm. So when approaching the law, one must approach it straightforward, literally. Now, everything I have said, some of you think I'm just, you may think that I am just spitting out some BS, right? You may think you may think I'm just talking Right? Because I read Proverbs and I don't see what you're talking about. I read the whole Bible. I know everything about it. Nope, I ain't never hear what you're talking about. You're making it up. 
All right. Did you read the Targums first of all? And second of all, when I unfold this to you, then you'll see why you're not the teacher and you're not the son. And what Solomon is talking to. Okay. Anyone coming with any type of contention to contend with me or to come in with these debates to prove themselves right will only find themselves struggling outside in their own judgment. These are the facts. Okay. So I've given you I've given you the introduction and we're going to now read the law, the commands of Solomon, which I follow along with all the others, right? Because any father, any of the righteous fathers who have given an instruction, I must obey all of their commands. I am not allowed to change their prior judgments. So what they state about any topic, issue, or choice, that I and you must walk in. And understood? Now you may notice and say, Ak, there's women in the class. These women are here to learn leadership to lead women. And the men are here to learn leadership to lead the, the men, the heads of families and otherwise. If you didn't know, the commandment of the law is to instruct the men in the presence of the women. So men, you're going to get a healthy dose in this class. Okay? So who wants to start chapter one? I can, sir. Okay. Chapter one. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of Dawood, king of Israel. So we know immediately who's talking. We have the identification heading in the first verse. We're talking. This is from Solomon, and like I said, king of Israel. Verse number two. To know wisdom. Pause. So the purpose is for you to learn wisdom. And to know wisdom with intelligence. So you don't know you're here, whether you found me because this class, I'm not premiering on the internet. I'm not making a big fuss about it. I'm just going to post them and leave them, right? They'll be in the shadows of YouTube for you to find and study, right? Those who find me, who find this teaching will still have to come and find me in person to take this training and this class in the land. Everyone who comes to the training and to the classes will receive housing, food, in exchange for work, and they're going to have to give up of their resources, their gold, their silver, and their money to help the next person because they came in and filled up a space. They have to open up more spaces, right? That salvation may come to those who seek it. Sanctuary for those who need to escape from the wrath of the Most High, which he said to come. <clears throat> so you need to know wisdom. The first thing to knowing wisdom, you're going to have to start learning it. So right now you're just 
becoming aware. You are simple. Okay? I am simple. Without being a simple one, you're not going to gain the wisdom. If you are already wise in your own regards, you have already failed this class. Your death is chasing you. You are not in death's shadow. You are in the valley of death. You're in front of death's face. I'm going ahead a little bit. I'm going to slow down and I'm going to let Solomon explain it. And correction. So you're going to know wisdom and correction. So you came to seek and receive correction. That means off the dribble, you're wrong. From the beginning, you're wrong. The fact that you're here, you're wrong. And you came to be corrected and to receive the blessing of repentance and the correction of your path that you may live and obtain wealth and that it may be well with you and the people around you. Right? So you came to know wisdom and correction. Right? Next. To understand utterances of understanding. To understand these sayings and these utterances of understanding, the wisdom from the Proverbs. Right? Continue. To receive correction of reason and righteousness. Hold on. So now you're going to receive correction of your reasoning. This means off the, the beginning, up until now, all of your reasoning has been wrong. Because even if it's partially correct, it's partially incorrect. Yes. <laughs> and since we cannot have this flawed, half right, half wrong judgment, because half wrong and half right together make it all wrong, you've come to correct your reasoning. So we're going to give you proper reasoning. You'll be able to assess people by perfecting yourself. Hmm. You understand? So you have to assess yourself, assess the way you're going. Then in the process of practice, you'll begin to assess other people and to determine what path they are on and where they are going. It's not for you to correct them. It's just for you to identify who is on the wicked path and who is on the righteous path based upon their first step. You understand? So if they set their foot on the path of wickedness in the first step, you know to avoid this individual. Okay? And when I say avoid, it means just don't have dealings with them, not don't talk to them. Salam alaikum. And no, no, I don't uh, get involved in nothing like this. That's it. Hi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's very nice. All right. Salam alaikum. We going this way. <clears throat> Continue. And righteousness. So you know, coming to learn how to walk in righteousness and to perfect that walk of righteousness, to identify what decisions lead to the path of righteousness so that you can continue making the chain of decisions and the chain of actions that the Most High 
labels you righteous, right? So it's choices and actions, okay, that label you righteous. We call the choices and the actions a path. And justice. So there is a path of justice. What you must do to enforce justice when you are here. What you must do that justice is around, which means the wicked get punished and the innocent gets restored, the victim. Okay? We don't play victim here because the Proverbs that you're going to learn is going to educate you about who the actual victim is. It's not the one that cries out loud and hollers, this one did this to me. Okay? That's not the victim. The victim is the one to whom the crime is brought against from the judgment. You understand? All right. We'll be back right after this. All right. So where do we leave off? Oh, justice, sir. The way of a justice. All right. So this is another purpose. The way of justice. Right. What's justice? Having a proper judgment in your home. Having proper judgment about others. Having proper judgment in serving the community. Having proper judgment in obeying leadership. Having proper judgment identifying leadership. Right? Judgment is applied everywhere. Proper judgment in selecting a spouse. Proper judgment in where to give. And who to give. How to identify the righteous from the wicked. Right? Continue. And uprightness. And uprightness. Okay? So now uprightness is that you have to actually walk in it with perfection. It is not the judgment of others and the absolving of yourself. That's two fancy words, I know. Let me make this as simple. Instead of deeming yourself good and righteous and clean, you're judging yourself and working on it, and you're judging others, whether they're working on it or not, and then you can identify the ones who are working on it and stay away from or keep at a distance those who are not. So you don't get entangled with them. So you have to become upright yourself, meaning you have to go through the process of getting up from where you are, which is why you're here. Continue. To receive, uh, to give to the simple prud prudence. So to give to the simple prudence. Mm. I'm simple. I need prudence. Do you know what prudence is? Prudence is the self-management, the organization and order to prepare for the future and that you don't waste opportunities, supplies, and or resources. Mm. This is self-organization. <laughs> right. Wow. So you're here because you're simple. You need to know what steps to take, what steps to make, so that you make the right steps in the right order and at the right time. Right? You know, 
a lot of I know a lot of people that suffer from buyer's remorse. Right. They go out and while they're shopping, it feels amazing. They buy whatever and they think less about the budget and what they need to do. Then after they get home and they see the responsibilities that they actually needed, they feel bad because what they got, though it made them feel good to buy it in the moment, it did not solve their needs. Mm -hmm. Right? I went out to the party and I, 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 I spent all this money on drinks and to show my friends a good time because I love them. And now I don't have the money for the electric bill. Mm -hmm. Right? I went out shopping. I bought clothes. And now the landlord is asking for the money I owe him. And I, I don't have it for another week or two. Mm. And now I got to make it up next month. I hope he accepts. This is a lack of prudence. Mm. So we've all come to gain prudence because the prudence you need for the level you are on today is not the prudence you need for the next level. You need a different type. Right? Prudence is always necessary, but there are levels. Right? At no time is there a free for all where you can do whatever you want. Right? The prudence you need when you're poor to obtain wealth is a different prudence once you've obtained wealth to maintain it. Mm. The prudence you need <clears throat> once you've obtained wealth to pass it on to your son and your grandsons, the prudence, there's a different prudence you need at that time for them to gain the wealth which you have built for them, for them to multiply it, and then for them to go and prepare for their next generation and the generation after them. You know, this sounds very familiar to when what it took for you to make it this far to get here is what brought you here. But once you get here, you have to have That's a whole other thing to make it take into being here and so on. Right. What it take what it took you to get to this level, no matter how you found it. Right? In going through the process, you're going to have to start at zero and gain a whole new set of skills, which are not built upon the prior set. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, it, it's, it's not built upon the prior set. You could have come here because of a lie. Yes. Somebody told you there's a crazy man dressed in a strange type of Muslim garment. And you got to hear what he's talking about because it kind of makes sense. But I don't know if this guy's the real deal or not. And you got here, you heard what I'm, you hear what I'm teaching and you begin to apply it to your life and you begin to see some results. Calamity strikes wherever you are. Terrors come, Right. And you decide to take me up on my offer of coming here, right? To test me in my word that I will do, that I'm doing what I say I'm doing. You get here, you find out it's true. And then you find out you have to walk through an entire process that you may have skipped. Or you may have done it all over YouTube and when you get here, I have to carry you from the beginning of the reality because the reality here is not the reality where you came from. Mm. So you still have to start from the beginning, but you already have awareness. So your awareness can be a benefit 
or setback. Depending on your humbleness, your humility, right? Humility says, let me go in and let me be taught as if I don't know. Start from the beginning and work through. If I got it, I got it. I'll be able to excel, right? Going through the process. I don't have to say nothing. I just have to do what is right and go through the process. So what got you here is not predicated upon your prior information. You will find twist terms and all kinds of caveats, right? Stipulations of rules and that how they are actually applied versus how you thought they were applied and they will contradict. And if you learn it and learn it the way it is applied here, you will have great success. If you apply it the way you think, you think it should be applied, you will have instant failure. So prudence on this level is not the prudence for the next level. Okay? The prudence I, I served with in my first seven years is not the prudence I need for my eighth year. And this year, I've had to do something different, right? I had to write this book. And as I'm going through this book and extrapolate it, I'm going to compile it. There'll be a link in the, the box below for you to have the book, for you to be able to read along and see the notes and go through this book yourself, reading Proverbs, so that you can verify the truth. But even the book stops after... Nine, ten chapters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The book ceases because you're just going to get sayings and definitions and you have to come out and practice it hands on with counsel, with a guide. Then if you come out now, right, in this first group that's coming out and you give, you're going to now understand and it's going to set you up to lead the next group that comes in at a later time. You'll become the teachers of the beginnings of learnings, the beginnings of understanding, the beginnings of the way of uprightness. Anybody who comes and arrives here and believes that they are upright day one, they're on the way out. Mm -hmm. That means you didn't come to learn. You are violating this commandment. You are violating this instruction. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Continue. And to the young knowledge. So to the young knowledge. And to and sense. Sense. <laughs> knowledge and sense. Meaning you don't have good sense. For here, mm -hmm. there is a different sense here. Common sense, not common. Okay? In America, they use common sense. Mm -hmm. Here, we don't use the common sense. We have good sense. It is above the common sense. Mm -hmm. So you need to get the sense the reasoning we have here on how we see things, how we judge what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to gain that. Mm -hmm. Right? And this, notice it said the young. This yeah. has nothing to do with age. It says Isaac was a young man. He was like almost 40. <laughs> he was a young man. What's the constant? The one that comes to learn is still yet young. Right? So you get to have the, the uh, extension of time. 
because you are learning, right? And doing. So you're going to get a new sense of, of nutrition, food. You're going to get a new sense of relationships and how to get into them, right? What's a lawful relationship? You're going to get a new sense of what is a lawful selection of a relationship. So, which means your ideas that you have where you are, I promise you, they're going to be wrong when you come here and see the, this, these commands in actual application. The wise man will hear and he will increase knowledge and the reasonable man will obtain leadership. Ah, so I didn't lie. No, you didn't. The one who gains comes in to learn, he will gain the knowledge, right? But he has gained it only through his intelligence. He doesn't know it. If he practices it, then he becomes a wise man. He becomes wise. Right? Mm. And the reasonable man, the man who gains this reasoning and adopts it for himself and walks in it, loves the house of Solomon, loves Solomon, loves me, Solomon's son, the teacher. This man who walks in all of these things, being reasonable, who by reason said, this is right, and I accept, and I will not change, he has integrity, will obtain leadership. Mm. He will be appointed a king or a ruler of people. He will be appointed a commander, or, or, or all of the judges have to be this way. All of the new coming shakes and princes. Mm. So you can't come in with a title. You're going to have to earn it here. Mm. And if you come and you feel like, well, I'm already Prince so-and-so by birthright, you still got to go through the process. Mm -hmm. You are invited. Should you fail, we'll take the one who does over the one who does not. Mm. So being reasonable is what is what it takes for you to obtain leadership. It has nothing to do with the amount of years or what all kinds of understandings you may have had. That has nothing whatsoever to do with it. You have awesome. to come to a place within yourself to be able to reason. Right. Okay. okay. Here, you pick up. I'm trying to get my new pad. Okay. Mm -hmm. Six. Yes. To understand Proverbs. Speak up, speak up. To understand Proverbs and mysterious sayings. Hold on. Mm. So you must, it is a requirement. So when it says the wise man will hear and he will increase his knowledge and the reasonable man will obtain leadership. Mm. To understand Proverbs and mysterious sayings. So I am already considered a sheikh, a wise man. Yes. Right? I, am all, I have already been reasonable and shown my reasonability, a, a man being able to reason to be appointed to leadership. That's how I gained the status of the crown prince. It was earned. Birthright came into play. Genealogy came into play. But I used this reasoning 
and it proved faithful to put me in the seat and in the right location at the right time with the right guides and teachers to teach me to lead me. Nobody can guide me or lead me save them. Okay? So it won't be a good thing someone coming and trying to tell you what to do or how. Not a good thing at all. Mm-hmm. Not good at all. And so the reasonable man must understand and accept the definitions of these things. Mm-hmm. You have to understand this. You have to accept the saying, accept the definition, and look for it. Okay? You ain't got to participate in it, but you look for it and you use it. This will strengthen you. Mm-hmm. The words of the, so you have to understand this the words of the wise. And they're puzzling, enigmatic sayings. Hmm. How we see things and the saying that goes with it is different from how it plays out in reality. We see it as it is. Hmm. In reality, it plays out and it sounds different. It sounds sweeter. Okay? Mm. So in reality, you're going to say, well, this is how it really happened. The wise judge sits back and he's going to see what you're saying. But what he saw from the beginning was this saying and this other saying. Ah, the product of this is this problem that you have. He's going to hear the sayings. Mm -hmm. He's going to hear the sayings once you tell him where you was, who you got involved with, and the problem you in now. Mm -hmm. Continue. And the words of the wise, oh yeah, you said that, and their enigmatic sayings, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of Yayat. So the beginning of wisdom, right, is the fear of Allah. This word, etukun Allah. Etukun Allah. Okay? With wisdom and the accepting of correction, this is first. Okay? And must be obtained with the foundation of the law, the customs, and the tradition. And there is no skipping of this step. Okay? You have to know the law. You have to know the customs and the traditions. And you always have to consistently be receiving and accepting of correction. If you cannot accept correction, you fail this class right now. Okay? That means you're approaching everything and everyone that speaks to you, you approach them with the humility of, wait a minute, Let's check what the instructions say, because you're right. Maybe I am wrong. Let's take a look and see where the judgments sit. Do you know how many people I have caught with that basic, that little basic first step? Hmm. That step, if you play basketball, is like the basic crossover. You bounce the ball from this hand to this hand. That's it. Basic, right? Mm -hmm. Bounce the ball on the ground. It goes to the other hand. And you bounce it between these two hands like this. It's called a crossover. It's a basic maneuver. Mm -hmm. You know how many people come to me 
saying they know something. And when I say, you you might be correct, let us check the instructions of the law and the commandments of the prophets to see if what you are saying is right, that I might change. So I accept the correction, right? Yes. <clears throat> when we check the instructions every single time, <clears throat> I'm correct, they are wrong, yet they still refuse to change. Who do you think gets put out? They did. They did. If I'm wrong, I'll accept the correction. I'll make the repentance, pay whatever it is I got to pay, do whatever it is I got to do, and I accept the new sense, the new understanding. Mm. But since I'm doing that to convert to this law, whenever they come with their Nephilic, Nephilim ideas, the mm. ideas and the ways of the giants, Right? White people, <clears throat> they always lose the debate, the argument, the questioning, or the accusation. <clears throat> Continue. But wisdom and correction fools despise. Wisdom and correction fools despise. So now you see the difference. If you come to me and tell me, no, it's not supposed to be like this. I read it's supposed to be like that. You're right, maybe I'm wrong. Let us take a look at my instruction and let us see where the judgment sits. When I, when I go to the instruction and the instruction says I am correct and they are wrong, when they despised correction, instantaneously, they are labeled a fool. Right across their forehead, fool, won't accept correction. Listen, this is saying you wrong. No, nah, but I believe you a fool. Now, because you believe in a lie that you told yourself, you're trying to make a lie right with belief. You're a fool. Okay? We'll be back right after this. All right. So, you must understand the words of the wise, the enigmatic sayings. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of Allah, right? So you don't accept the teachings and walk in the fear of Allah. You don't accept the instructions. You don't accept these commands. You don't accept these corrections, these judgments, the ways to think. You immediately get labeled a fool, okay? So this is the introduction and the purpose of what Proverbs is for. And you're telling me that the people who read Proverbs read it and understood to do this. They did not. I've been sitting out here eight years and not one proverbian person came up to join me because the instruction says for me to be doing what I'm doing. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They'll quote it. Mm -hmm. But if you ask them to put their hands to doing it, they cannot, will not, and do not. So to gain the fear, you have to come and learn the law, and walk through that beginning process, Found, building your foundation to gain the beginning of judgment, to have the fear of Allah, to understand 
what the judgments are, where they come from, and how we are to apply them to ourselves. We did this and judgment begins. Now I am unlocking the seal of Solomon to reveal to you why, so that you can see who's the teacher, who's the king, who's the prince in this generation, that you may come and learn to obtain the leadership necessary to come and build the sanctuary for your survival and the survival of your son's sons after you, to whom you have not even birthed yet. Right? For the preservation of the nation according to the covenant which was promised. So it's many covenants. That's the word where well, you call it Shab Shabuot or Shabbatot or Shabbaot. You call it that. Right? But the Sabtot, this is covenants. The Shabbat or the Sabt is the sign of the covenant. The Sabtot is the sign of the covenants, plural. The signs, there's many signs of the covenants, plural. Mm. Right? The rainbow. This is a sign from the covenant of Noah. This is also my father, and I honor his judgment, and I honor his teachings, and I keep them. The circumcision. This is the sign of the covenant unto Abraham, and the, the sign of his covenant and his judgment, and I keep it. The Teflon. This is a sign of the covenant that was made in Mount Sinai unto Moses. And this is the sign of that covenant and the seven days of rest and the six days of work that match and follow that have commands for. And I walk in that and I keep it. So it's about keeping all the covenants, not the Shavuot one. is about keeping all the covenants. There's not one. There's days of rest commanded for the new moon. There's a covenant about that. And the new moon feast and the four times of the year are allocated from Noah. Mm -hmm. Right. Noah. There are Noah days. Right? The covenant of the Pascha and why it is important and, and, and memorialized. I have to keep that and its festival day. The atonement. I have to keep its covenant and its sign, which is still yet to come, on its day. Mm. There's all these festivals, these days appointed for covenants and signs. In seasons. <clears throat> so let's see what the Most High has to say. Let's go verse number eight. Continue. Hear my son. Whoa. Who is he talking to? You, his son. Ah. So now he's directing the conversation to the son who will listen, hearing and doing. Hi. I'm Rabbi Sheikh, and this is how I got here. Mm. This is how I obtained the leadership. Not only through genealogy, that was one step, but before the genealogy came into question, I was first hearing and doing this wisdom as it was given from my teacher. The Honorable Sheikh Aid from the House of Midian. So, here my son. So, this directly to me, this personal. Okay? So, let's see what he says about his son. The correction 
of your father and do not ignore the law of your mother. Hear to my son the correction of your father and do not ignore the law of your mother. <clears throat> so he's saying, son, I am your father. My wife is your mother. You will obey my judgment as king of Israel above all. Do not ignore it. Okay. That's what he said, right? Mm -hmm. So if I took my time out to seek it eight years ago, which I did, and I've kept it all this time, every single day for eight years, which I did, mm -hmm. there will be a benefit. Mm -hmm. I should obtain leadership, which I have. And what else? For they are beauty and grace for your head. They are beauty and grace for my head. So you notice today I'm sitting and everybody's wearing something a little traditional. Right? Mm -hmm. This is how my father dressed. This is how I dress. This is what my father wears. Is a garment is a fragrance, everything, this is what I'm wearing. <clears throat> and being in Solomon's way, it has given me beauty. Don't care how you feel about it. If you like the European way, you don't belong here. This is for restoration and healing from captivity, not those who seek and love captivity. Mm -hmm. Go where you want and enjoy that. And what else? And a necklace for your neck. So we know mm -hmm. how much our people love to receive the chain of belonging, the necklace, right? Mm -hmm. When you sign to the big cool rap label, they give you a chain with the labels yes. identification. This my chain. My father's law and correction, this my chain. It says House of David. <laughs> right? This my yoke. With it, it shows who I am affiliated with mm -hmm. and give me my status. This law and this correction, which I so willingly accept. What else? My son. Who is he talking to? His son. My son. He's talking to me. If sinners entice you, do not yield. If sinners entice you, don't yield. Meaning, they're going to come and they're going to bring bright ideas and promises of good times. Mm. Don't go and don't accept. For eight years, I did this. Mm. I stayed in my village among my father's house and accepted to live in the traditional life among my family and my people in a humble beginning to obtain the understanding of which my father was talking about. You have to do the same thing, except for instead of learning from my teacher, you must come to me and yield to my teachings and my instruction because I did this. I didn't listen to the sentence. Why don't you get you a big fancy house in Tel Aviv? No, I'll stay here in the desert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Rent the same. Mm -hmm. But 
but I'll sit here and live with my teacher and I will remain close to him every day. I will be with him every day. I will get every drop or iota of teaching from him till he is sick of me. Mm-mm-mm. And even then, I still return and will sit and be faithful to him because I love him. He is the one the Most High appointed over me to guide me. There is no other. Why? The Most High only going to send one. I'm the only one teacher. Everybody else is lying. Proverbs says it. So let's see what else Proverbs says. So you have identifying markers. If they say, come with us, we will lie and wait for blood. Mm. We will wa- lie and wait without cause for the innocent man. Oh, so they're going to say, listen, we can make a lot of money. All we got to do is set this up do this and overcharge these people for this thing and we can get the money from them is legal no i'm not doing that that's not legal for me <laughs> come this dude got this 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 If we take it from him and he don't know who we are, we will get this, this, and this, and we will divide it amongst us. No, I'm not doing that. I got to hustle. I got to this. I got this, this idea and that idea. And it's always about getting money. No, I'm not doing it. What does it say? Continue. Let us swallow them like Sheol the living. So let's consume the people and their wealth. And those without blemish like those who descend to the pit. And the innocent people who don't have anything wrong with them, who just trusted and believing in us, hoping in us, trying to support you, we throw them into a pit. Like how the brothers threw Joseph in. Right? No, no, because you you should have taken the judgment class. You know what I'm talking about. Let us throw the one without blemish into the pit. Okay. I'm not with this. I'm not participating. I'm not doing it. I'm not throwing any more of my brothers into the pit. Don't go to the music industry and ask them for nothing. Don't go to the government and ask them for nothing. Get your plane ticket, get your passport, gather up all your money, bring it here and give it here for the buying and the purchasing of the land and for the growing of the food. It is worth more than silver and gold, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Mm. Continue. All wealth and value we will find, and we will fill our houses with booty. See, we will get rich. We make all this money. We could get a bag. If we can get this program on people's phones, it will siphon off their uh, uh, credit card information, and we can get money this way. If we do it this way. No, I don't do that. I'm going to ask you. Give for the building of the sanctuary and come to save your own life. You don't accept, die, and you sin. I can't get that loud this time of the morning. Die in your sin because you have earned death. You have earned the hatred of Allah. Continue. Throw your portion among us. There will be one purse for all of us. So throw in my lot among them and make one purse, one pocket, and we all will divide the wealth when we get it. Why? It says, do not throw myself into this 
among the wicked. So what's making you doing it with the righteous to build back the kingdom, to buy back the sanctuary so difficult? Oh, I know, because your lot and your purse is already in among the wicked. You joined in with the wicked bank and you have a mortgage. And instead of getting out of the house and taking the money you can to get out, you want to try to maintain this because you don't want to look bad in the eyes of the oppressor. All of this completely sums up do not operate in unjust measures and ways and do not operate in usury. Right. Don't be the victim of usury and don't be the usurer. Mortgage is usury. Insurance is usury. Well, I'm, I'm just telling you. Now, I understand you in the situation. The agreement is made and, you know, you feel like it might be high risk to pull out now because you might lose something. Let me tell you something. You're going to lose it anyway. You can pull out what you can, take what you can, and get reestablished in the new place and let the chips fall where they may, or you can fall down with it, turn into a pillar of salt, just like Lot. Wife. Just like Lot's wife. Because what you're doing is, instead of looking forward to prepare for the plagues and the destruction, which you know is coming, you're looking back because, oh, my house, oh, my children. I have children, too. They're in trouble right now as we speak. I'm not moving. There is no salvation from the judgments of the Most High for those who operate outside of this teaching. I cannot put my person with the wicked to try to split up some mystical wealth. I have to ask those who wish to be righteous to give in righteousness and we form one purse for righteousness. You see? So it's one pocket, one purse, either way. Join a gang, you in one pocket with that gang. Join the government, you in one pocket with Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, Nimrod, and the fallen angels. Stay there, keep the laws of Pharaoh in America and the land and think you're not in sin and not becoming subject to the law of Allah under this rule, under this guidance. You are with the shaitan. This is just for the Itzaki, the sons of Isaac and the sons of Jacob. This is not for everybody. That's why I put this video up privately. That's what it is. Now, you can't, you can't hold on to Babylon and try to come to the land at the same time. You must love one and hate the other. You have to let go of one to pursue the other because you can't maintain both. There's no way possible. I've seen it over eight years. It always failed. The one who looks back to go back goes back. Mm. See, mm. this is the procedure I'm trying to tell you the truth I tell you no lies if you bring the Babylon idea well if I come here and I bring my money then what I'm getting you're going to get salvation and you will receive your inheritance at the appointed time there is much to do and you cannot do it by yourself either and your money is insignificantly not enough and I don't care how many millions you bring <clears throat> you also don't think that because you bring your money you will have a say 
The appointed is appointed, they appointed through righteousness, through obedience of the instruction, and not appointed because they bring the money. So if you bring your money and you think you have a say about your money or where it go or how it is used, then you are operating in Babylon and your money was, you gave money as a bribe. The only thing this will get you is out. You don't know what it takes for this to succeed. I'm telling you this right now. You don't know what it takes for this to succeed. You know not the instructions. That's why you're not here and you're in your captivity. You're in your oppression. You're in your poverty and you have all of this neediness. You can ask these sisters right here as I say it with a straight face. I pack my one little suitcase in the back. I get in, I get, I get a, 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 my friend to drive me to the border and I go to my family and this over. That is true. I have no need. Mm -hmm. I talked to my family just yesterday. They will follow me without you. They've seen all of the benefit of having me close. So I do what the most I says. It says, take them and you and bring them together. So this is what we do in. The Most High told them, they called me and told me. My teacher told me what the Most High, that's my sister. Sure did. Sure did. My teacher called, I was revealed before the Most High in a dream. We have to get you big, spacious land. Sure did. <laughs> Sure did. No problem. We will have the money from the congregation. They will give and they will come or the most I kill them. There's a difference. Obedience is righteousness. <laughs> if I'm doing it because the most I said do it and give it to the most I because the most I said give it to him and let him do what the most I tell him to do. That's obedience. That make you righteous. Not how much you pray and look and judge from your high and mighty seat as whoever you think you are. Not from captivity, not from anywhere. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> All right. So, so sir, mm -hmm. based on that which you have graciously expounded onto us, coming out and preparing to come out, you must prepare yourself to lose something. You You're going to lose it anyway. anyway. You're either going to lose it in the exchange or you're going to lose it all and you're going to see yourself lose it all. And if the Most High preserve your life, the only thing you're going to do is end up with everything lost. And I still have to bring a provision when you get to the place for those who disobeyed. There is a meeting place. So you will still come meet me. So being. So if you live, you meet me and you're going to get this class. But you're still going to lose everything. So that's why you're always saying it costs you everything, everything. The counting, a wise man counts the cost for the journey he must take. To come into righteousness out of wickedness, it costs you everything. 
It cost me everything, every dime, every cent, every nickel of everything that I get. It cost Ali everything, every dime, every cent, every nickel that he gets. There is no way around it. Your provisions have been met. You don't believe me? Talk to the priest. For eight years, there has been nobody I did not have the strength to sustain in this land. My only problem is they refuse to keep this commandment. They refuse to walk under this judgment that I chose to walk from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I accepted all of these instructions and just said, I'll just walk in it and let's see if it works. It worked. Anyone who didn't listen always suffers the same thing. Okay? If that's not even the issue. Continue reading. Let's see. My son, do not go on the path with them. Hold, back. Hold on with it. My son, who's he talking to? Let's keep the context. He's talking to me because I am his descendant of many generations. But he's talking to a specific son for the restoration of the kingdom, and I'm the one sitting in the seat right now. Okay? There's nobody else. I'm sitting vigil. Okay? I'm at the doorpost. I'm blocking the entryway. You cannot get in. You cannot go past me. You cannot go around me. I'm sitting here. My son, do not go on the path with them. I'm telling you the same judgment my father gave me. Get out of whatever agreement you have with Babylon, with the government, with your mortgage, with your houses, with your businesses over there. Come here and establish this. I'm not saying be rash about it, but you can send the money that is necessary and then make your transfer point and say, okay, we got this, come over here. We need help with our own supermarket. We have to have our own cisterns. We have to have our own flocks. We need flocks of chickens and flocks of pigeons. We have to get our own flocks of sheep, flocks of goat, flocks of cows, and flocks of camels. We have to have our own. The operation is bigger than you can imagine. We are currently looking at a space and it have almost a thousand to nine thousand acres. Hmm. Right? That's a whole county. Yes. Right? He said spacious. He didn't say get a block. No, spacious. Right? I get it with houses, and then I still got to put more houses on it. This is our own government. You have to decide whether you live or you die. Your choice. So it says, don't go on the path with them. So I didn't. I got out of the path with them. What they told me to do, I didn't follow or obey. I just continued in this and continued with my teacher and trusted what he said. What else? Hold back your foot from their path. Hold. This is the saying. Hold back your foot from their path. What? Okay. Listen, I got an idea. We go into, uh, I know like you are a good person and very industrious and very smart and intelligent. I want to go and make some business in Africa. I want you to go there to supervise it. Now I'm not going. I want to go to Ghana. They got this new initiative. I'm not going. In South Africa, they're getting all this. I'm not going. In Congo, they found diamonds in the street. I'm not going. 
There is nothing to make me violate my father's instruction. The Most High knows where I am. He knows I'm walking in it. He will meet me here. The righteous will give because the spirit of prophecy is upon them. The spirit of prophecy means from the joy of your heart and your soul, you're going to do what is asked and give what is asked and come and enjoy the goodness that the Most High has promised to his people here in the land, in your living, breathing life. Continue. For their feet are running to evil. So now it designates these people who have this plan to go outside of this instruction, their feet are automatically running to evil. Period. That means all of them. And even your ideas to second guess this instruction and this plan means you are now aligning your heart and getting ready to set your feet to run to evil. Continue. And they hasten to shed blood. And you are hastening to shed innocent blood. Right? Mm -hmm. So you stay over there. You keep your, your things over there. And you don't want to get rid of it. You don't want to close out business because you want to support somebody in their wickedness, in their wicked path, in their wicked ways. The Most High now deem you wicked with them. The same way I cannot get on a plane right now and fly to South Carolina to save my children who have gotten themselves in trouble, neither can you. I cannot set my path to go in with the wicked. My children have to come here to save themselves. You have to come here to save yourselves. I must prepare this for the obedience to the Most High to be called righteous, to build a city. This is the instruction that I was given to give to you, for you to contribute to, so that you will know for yourself whether or not you are righteous or you are one of the sinners. So when death comes to you, you know you earned it. You deserved it. Continue. For in vain is the net spread for a winged bird. That's another saying. Oh, for in vain is the net spread for a winged bird. <laughs> You're not going to catch the thing you are wishing for. <laughs> Your net is not going to catch a bird that can fly. It's vanity. It is not how you catch birds. Continue. <clears throat> now it said it was going to give you the definition of these sayings and utterances. It's given them. It said it. It's given them. You're getting these utterances and sayings and you're understanding the definition of these words. Of these sayings. Okay? For in vain they spread their nets to catch a winged bird. That's your vanity. Whether you legal or illegal, all of it is unlawful. Did you hear that? So whether legal, <coughs> legal, you're in league 
with Babylon, its laws, its ordinances, and being good on good terms with Babylon. Right? Illegal, you're violating the laws of Babylon and only to destroy and lie in wait for innocent people so that you can obtain wealth. Because Babylon has its legal applications to lie in wait for innocent blood and they're doing it illegally as well. So nobody is being lawful in Babylon. You all mad at me. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna like me. It's all right. You hate me. You hate my father because I'm telling you what his teaching is. And all who hate Solomon love death. And I and Solomon are the same. Me and my father are one. You see me, you see him. Uh, he's going to tell you. And you're going to hear things that I say that he says. And you're going to understand that in principle, we are the same. Continue. And they lie in wait for their own blood and lie concealed for their own lives. So you're lying in wait for your own blood and you're lying concealed for your own death, the loss of your own life, whether it legally or illegally, no matter where you are. If you're not here doing this, you are signing away yourself to death and this for your disobedience. You cannot protect the wicked in Babylon. You must abandon them for your own life. You trying to preserve the wicked is only going to lead to your death because blinding your eyes you cover it and have pity upon the wicked in the day of judgment. Oh, I sound like an evil man now. I know how this sounds. Right? And I'm telling you this, you guys, my sister, we up, we talked for a good time this morning about the situations going on with my own children. And I've said the same judgment. I'm for this. I'm not for you and for what you want and everything all cloudy and good and this. No, no, no. You ask for the Most High to redeem you. The only thing coming your way is loss and problems. Now, I'm going to teach you how to capitalize so that you don't lose everything and die. You're going to lose a lot, though. This inevitable. Continue. Hold on. Wait a minute. So let me break out these two points. Every candidate must hear and do from the appointed leaders and seek their correction and counsel according to what Solomon has commanded. As for me, I have sought the counsel of my guide, my teacher, and Solomon, and Moses, and Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and Yosef, right? Mm -hmm. And that's only based upon what you witnessed. So I can tell you from what you witnessed. Mm -hmm. If enticed or asked by sinners, do not yield or go with them, or support them. Right? Don't lie and wait for an innocent person without cause. Don't get in agreement with evil usury and oppressive devices or agreements. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. To steal another man's wealth legally or illegally or to allow someone to steal away your wealth mm -hmm. legally or illegally to make one pursue the one purse or one pocket 
to do evil, do not enter on the path with them. All of these are the paths of falsehood. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I'll let Solomon tell it. Go ahead. Thus are the ways of all who do falsehood. Duh! Legally, illegally, all of this is all the paths of falsehood because you're not coming in under this teaching to live under this culture, under this lifestyle, in this land. You're wrong. Now, tell me how you write. Tell me how this don't fit you or don't suit you, you simple one who came here for correction. And if you don't accept this a correction, don't worry, death coming to you. We get to swim in the deep today. I'm a little excited, right? <laughs> because the whole time I'm reading the law, everybody go into a dream because the law speaks from the place of perfection, mm -hmm. right? The judgment speaks about from the place of going through the process from the beginning and how long it will take to get to the end. Mm -hmm. And here I am, and I'm like, you guys done? Because I'm tired of the dream. When you want to deal with reality, we have to go into the deep. I have to bring you into the council. This is the council of Solomon. You can ask my sister. I sit down for three days. And I write out this book from the instructions of Solomon to make it simple for you. Because the enigmatic sayings were used to confound the enemy so they would not destroy the text. How wise is that? They sound like just the advice you could take, you could not take it. No, they're commands. There is only take. Take this advice and only walk in this way. For, for my son and for those who love me, love him, and do what he is telling you right now. Or die. I'll let Solomon tell you. Continue. <clears throat> So the ways of all who do falsehood, they take away the lives of those who use them. Ah, so not doing what we're doing here with is the way of truth, the preservation of life. You're doing the way of falsehood in America, 100 percent. And it is to take away your life. Right. Everybody in America dies. And everybody is going to die. As a matter of fact, in the end, America will be completely uninhabitable, utterly destroyed, glowing in the dark. A place for ostriches and cats and whatever survives the coming war. Man will not be there. Man wasn't there in the beginning. Man will not be there in the end. It will cease. Understood? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Wisdom resounds in the street. Wisdom resounds in the street. And gives her voice from the streets. And gives her voice from the streets. Mm. I'm putting wisdom in the street. And I'm going to let it resound. What? I'm putting the video. Here's the saying. I'm putting the video out for public access on a YouTube to make it available for anyone passing by who wishes to learn. The rest of you, whether you accept, you come in, good. You don't accept, you don't come in, and you die, this also good. It is a joy when the wicked die. 
Mm. Oh, you're not, you don't, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> you don't accept this. You think I said something wrong. We'll check with Solomon and see what Solomon say. Excuse me, sir. Uh, what is the meaning of resound? To resound. See? Echo. Ooh. Reverberate. Ring out. Fill the air. Boom. Peal. Thunder. Rumble. Ooh. So this is my thunder bomb of wisdom that I'm putting in the streets. The echo. Well, who am I echoing? Solomon said it first, mm -hmm. and I am echoing his choices, his decisions, minus his mistakes, because I'm listening to his full advisement. He sinned that I may not. I don't have to. I can just learn from him and walk exactly in his steps. Continue. On top of fortif fortifications, she proclaims. At the entrance of the gates in the cities, she speaks her word. Okay, so this saying, on top of fortifications, she proclaims, and in the gates, she speaks her words. Wisdom will only be found in the house of instruction and in the Beit Din, the house of judgment. This is the place where wisdom seeks, speaks. This is the place where the sheikhs sit. The Shekim or the Nas Shekim. The sheikhs, the kings, the princes, Nas Shekim. So it's the place where you become a ruler over peoples, a king, a prince, a commander, etc. And it's also the place where the kings, commanders, princes all sit. Right? I live in a house full of sheikhs. I too am one. Continue. How long will the simple ones love simplicity? So how long will you love simplicity? Mm. It's a personal question for you to ask yourself, right? Because if you came to this video and you came to watch it and you came to learn, you're the simple one. Mm -hmm. You don't have wisdom. You don't have reasoning. You don't have understanding. You came to gain it. So how long are you going to continue on your simple path before you actually put some real work into getting what you need done so you can go where you need to go, right? You need to come here and you need to really embody this law, this lifestyle, this custom, and this tradition. And you need to give that we have the resources for you and for others. Mm. Right? You're not going to be able to walk out this law in the land of captivity with any amount of fullness. I know I already was there. I already tried. And I know better than you. Mm -hmm. Right? So I know where you have to concede the law and you have to walk in and accept the oppression. I also know the way to come out, how to get out, what's needed when you get out, and the process that is required to go through for that. <clears throat> you have to come and follow my leadership. So, how long are you, the unlearned, going to continue to pretend to know? You see that? When I say it in English, this just rolls off the tongue. How long are you, you listening to me, the unlearned, going to continue to pretend to know? How long will you simple ones? How long will you love simplicity? Simplicity is pretending to know when you don't. Like a child playing with a toy. I'm a fireman. Oh, you're so simple. You're not the fireman, but we understand. You imagine it. Putting out the fire. Psh. 
Next question. Mockers desire mockery and fools hate knowledge. So how long will you mockers desire mockery, right? So how long will you double back after you hear what I teach, hear what I say, and make excuses about it and say, no, 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 I'm not going to be crazy. No, 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 I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it another way because it's better for me. That's making a mockery. You know what's needed to be done, and you are hesitant and being slow about doing it, trying to preserve some wickedness in the background. Right? Don't worry. Lot, Lot and Lot's wife did the same thing because they had sons that had married. And they were trying to preserve them and get some things together and slow down the wrath for them. It didn't work for Lot. And in looking back and in delaying and going into an alternative place and an alternative location and trying to go an alternative way, it got Lot's family cut off from the covenant. Which ultimately leads to one thing. Death. You lie and wait for yourself. See? <laughs> So you're clowning and teasing those who exhibit righteousness, those who actually walk in the path. You call them hasty. You call them foolish. They have stumbled so many times that you have looked at them and looked down upon them while they were following the instructions to diligently seek. Yeah, they made mistakes along the way. Because I had yet to be revealed. I was in class. Mm -hmm. Now that I have revealed myself, being diligent about the process, taking the seven years necessary, before I presented myself in the eighth, according to the instructions, this delayed. So now righteousness stands alone soul, right? With one man. And now, well, there is a second, but he's here because the most I want him here to support me and this work, then he have to go serve the most high, which supported me in this work because I have to rule over you. See, he's there to help teach you, Right? So the Most High don't kill you because the Most High killed for even the sinful thoughts in the heart if he's not in the position. See, they don't they don't understand. They, they don't get it. Mm. It's all right though. Continue. And we're gonna move on. Turn. Hold on. So and I also says how long Will fools hate knowledge? So now I'm giving you the knowledge. I'm giving you the information. I'm making you aware of the terms and the conditions of the righteous steps, how to make them, what to do, right? I'm giving you the bigger picture and we'll get down to the details because there's what you're going to need to do to get out of your situation. If you already have a bad feeling about anything that I said, you're a fool, you hate knowledge, and a fool that hate knowledge is headed toward death. I, I know I'm here fearing this conversation and having this opportunity to participate in it. And there's something that I recognize in this conversation you know, a lot of us were conditioned to believe by acknowledging the fool as a fool brought death unto you. 
But it's not that way. No. Based on what our father, King Solomon, is saying, the reality is a fool is a fool. Mm -hmm. And he continues to be a fool. He the one. That brought death. That faces death. Yeah, he brought death to himself. She brought death to herself. Okay. Wow. So let's see what the instructions are. Turn to face my chastisement. Here's the instruction. Turn now and face this chastisement. You're wrong. I'm wrong. I was wrong. I am still getting it right today. And if you turn to accept this chastisement, turn from your wicked ideas and plans and your wicked ways, we get a benefit. If you can accept that you're wrong and Get out of all you can get out of. Give the money you can. Send it over. Let us get this preparation. Then you will receive this benefit. What benefit you get? I will pour out to you my spirit and I will make known my words. You will gain the understanding of why you were told to do this thing this way. You will gain the wisdom, the understanding, and you will know after having completed the instructions in the opportune time, which is right now. Go through the steps. We only have five weeks until the 10th month. You must close out your business affairs to arrive here at the appointed time. <clears throat> Go ahead. For I called and you did not believe. So I'm telling you right now, that's the call. That was the invitation. You heard it? Yes, I did. Sir. It was it was masked in the chastisement of telling them that they're wrong before they get here mm -hmm. so that they can learn when they get here because they don't know. So they need to know that they don't know. And if they turn and accept this the chastisement, right, then they would receive the understanding and the wisdom after having completed the task. Yes, sir. Because you cannot gain understanding from words. You have to accept the instruction and do it and then see it in the process because the problem comes and you bypass it. You overcome the problems from your obedience, right? Like Joseph did with Pharaoh's dream. He overcome overcame the famine where Joseph was, was food. He obeyed the instruction. And the instruction was given to who? Pharaoh. Oh, yes. But the wisdom was given to Joseph. Yes. He understood the enigmatic sayings that Pharaoh had said. Mm -hmm. And he was able to, here's this prescription, Pharaoh was wise. He looked and said, this instruction given to me, but I could not understand it. You were given the understanding. I put you under me. You now number two, vice regent over all my land and have command over all my authority and resources. The only place you not in charge is in my throne room. And you go and you do it because you have the what? Wisdom and the understanding. You understood the instructions, the prescription to overcome the hard time you see coming. And everything happened that way. I now am king. 
And not only do I have the understanding of when this destruction is coming, but how to overcome it and what to ask for from the people, right? Because the people of Egypt hearkened unto Joseph and yes. did what he commanded. Yes. They received survival. They received superiority. What? They obeyed and received supremacy. And the children of Israel who put Joseph in the pit went into captivity. Obedience will bring you to leadership. Disobedience brings you down to captivity, down to pit, down to death, down to hell. Obedience brought the children of Israel out when Moses came with instruction like I am. <clears throat> we'll be back right after this. All right. We're back. So we are extending to you the hand, right? The hand of what? The hand of fellowship, of brotherhood, of sisterhood, of redemption. Right? Warning you, if you obey, you will live. September, this thing goes absolutely nuclear. 250 plagues is rolling out. Mm -hmm. This one, right? When I said the war started last year, the war started, you didn't recognize it. Now I'm telling you, this year, 250 plagues will start and will continue for the next 40 years upon the children of Israel until they become the seed of Isaac and learn this way, this covenant, this law, this tradition and walk in it. It'll stay upon them bringing death. And it not only will it bring death upon them, but it's going to utterly destroy the nations where they were scattered in, bringing everybody down because obedience will lift us up into supremacy. So Solomon says he called and you don't believe. That's what Solomon said. You see that? Yes, sir. They don't believe. That means they don't listen. No, they don't. Okay? So I, I said it. Solomon says, I raised my hand. I extended my hand to you now. And you didn't listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Solomon said, you changed all his counsel and did not want Solomon's rebuke. What? You did not want to accept the correction, go in a different way, really accept the wisest man, the spirit of the wisdom himself. You did not want to accept his instruction. You want to walk in your own ideas because it's a new day and age, right? Mm -hmm. No, ain't nothing new under the sun. That's, right. That's actually one of Solomon's saying. That's right. So Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun, and you the fool say it's a different day and time. We gotta move, we gotta move differently and with wisdom for our time, and you're a fool. Mm. So you're the one who changed everything. Because the book sits here and it's still saying the same thing, and I'm the son who decided to accept it who decided to accept his hand and take it, and now I'm sitting in the seat, and the destruction of the world is at hand, and you're oblivious like you don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you what's going to happen. Go ahead, read it. 
Indeed, I, at your misfortune, will laugh. I'm going to laugh. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because every time somebody does or says something against me or thinks a thought against me after saying they want to help me or, or they don't like me for whatever reason, instant calamity comes. And the thing that they said they wanted to do, they could not do it. And the Most High doesn't want anything from them. He rather destroy them because of they have spoken false testimony against me. They have thought evil in their heart against me because they hate Solomon when they hate what I'm doing and how I do it. So I'm going to laugh. The destruction is coming and I'm going to have a nice little chuckle. And what else is going to happen? And I will scoff when terror comes upon you. I'm going to scoff. Y'all know what scoffing is? Let me tell you. I get to deride, ridicule, smear, and treat with contempt. Jeer, jibe, and poke fun at when the terror comes upon you. And it will. You'll reach out to me. What am I supposed to do? Come in on a flying horse? Or maybe should I should grab a magical carpet? How do you expect me to save you from the trouble you have gotten yourself into when you could have avoided it altogether by simply giving, coming, and learning, obeying these basic, simple instructions? <laughs> Okay, mm, mm, mm. so it's all good. Everything's going to work out, right? That's what you believe? Let's see what Solomon got to say about this. When your terror... When your terror, not mine. See, had you turned to take the chastisement, admitted you were a simple fool, and you came here to learn, and you're going to start learning, and you're going to accept these as saying... You didn't take it. You got your own way of doing things and you know what you're doing. So when you do it your way, then what's going to happen is when your terror comes upon you, right? So when your terror comes, continue reading. Come suddenly and your misfortune comes like a whirlwind. So terror is going to come upon you suddenly. Now, I'm telling you, uh, you're going to get some warm-ups mm. before the great day of destruction. But it's coming upon you suddenly. When you see this Passover, the terror that's coming, this terror that's coming, consider it the glory of the Most High upon the nation because he promised it. This going to come suddenly. And misfortune comes in like a tornado. Just come in and just always something stirring up something and making it difficult. Why? The problems in your heart, the problems in your mouth. Mm, 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 mm. How you think and what you honestly believe and what you are honestly doing and what you're doing and where the, 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 the correction need to be made. So what happens? And your misfortune comes like a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. When distress, distress and anguish come over you, mm -hmm. then they will call me and I will not answer. See? There it is, right? Don't I say it all the time? Say it all the time. When your problems come, then you want to call me. I'm not answering. Not, no, I'm not answering. You're going to have to survive. You see, I told you to give to prepare because this is coming. 
I told you to come in this month before you cannot get out or before any disaster or something comes to trap you in. And you move in with your own pace. I say five weeks. I've been talking about this now for six months. And you dragging your feet because you believe you know better than Solomon. Now this is coming. And when this comes, I'm telling you right now, you want to call me and, t and ask me, can I help you? And can I get you? Hey, just, we just went through this, right? Sure did. Sure did. The elders come, they want to worship the idol, and the people that they worship the idol with abandon them. Mm -hmm. Sure did. And in their distress, who gets the phone call? We did, sir. All right. So in their anguish and distress, they call me. What? See, the same way you call Solomon, you call me. Why? I'm his son. I'm the one walking in his steps. I'm the one keeping what he commands. I am also the one sitting on his throne. As promised, there will always be a son to sit on your throne forever. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm sitting here. You know, brother, you just talking about that. You had said before that that was a time of mercy mm -hmm. when that was done. Mm -hmm. So this time, there ain't no mercy. Ain't no mercy. There's no mercy in this time for those who reject this instruction after having heard it. They are being perfidious, meaning they hear, but they're testing my word with rebellion. Well, let's see if I get the punishment if I do it my way, because I know he don't know what he's talking about. He's not here. Okay. So they will call me and I will not answer. What else will happen? Uh, they will seek me and they will not find me. Nope. You ain't going to be able to find me. Because we're going to the land anyway, so there's no way for you to know where it is or to be able to come to it. You cannot do nothing. You're not going to find me. And what's the reason why? For they hated knowledge and delighted not in the fear of Allah. You hated knowledge. You didn't accept the correction. You didn't accept that you're simple. You didn't accept that you needed to learn. You didn't accept that you needed training, upbringing, that you needed to be groomed into the culture and tradition. You didn't accept it. So now you hated knowledge and you delighted not in the fear of Allah because with the law, the customs and the traditions comes commands instructions to do day to day. You just said, I want to keep the law. The law says, keep the commands. The commands tell you what to do in this time, in this generation for your salvation and you're rejecting it. Continue. They did not want my counsel and neglected all my chastisement. So you didn't want the counsel and you neglected all the chastisement. Mm, 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 what do you get when you don't want the counsel and you reject the chastisement? And they will eat of the fruit of their ways and from their own counsel, they will be sated. Okay. So now you will eat the fruit of your ways. And from your own counsels and from your own actions, you will be satisfied. Enjoy the downfall. Enjoy the destruction. Enjoy seeing your loved ones die and perish. Enjoy your death. It's coming. Because of what? Because the perversity of the simple kills them. Mm. Perversity, meaning I'm telling you the exact and direct way to do something and you keep twisting it because of what you don't want to do. You want to put mercy upon the wicked. You want to preserve the life of your loved ones. And rather than preserving the life of yourself, you rather 
die and die with them in their sin and wickedness, being with them. That's perversity. Oh, that's perverse. Yes, it is. But I'm the villain. I am the devil. And I'm supposed to have and give and build for everybody. No, everybody has to contribute for everyone to have. You contribute to the government. The government makes businesses for you to work and collect pay for them to build. So you help them with the working and the building, and then they turn around and take your earnings and put it back into their pocket. Mm -hmm. No, 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 you don't know slavery? Here, go out into this field and plant corn. Right? I'm going to pay you a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. From this hundred dollars, you have to give me back 25 of this tax. For what? For my governing. Mm -hmm. From the 75, you have to pay me because you live on my land. And you drink in my water. And if you want to eat the food which you grew, this is my food, you don't eat it. You have to buy the food from me. And you left every month, every week with nothing. And when I say, get out of that house, get off of that land, come here, bring what you have. Bring everything, sell everything, forsake everybody to save your own soul. What you bring will be invested and you have a place to sleep, you have food to eat, you will be given your land by lot, inheritance, after it is gotten in the time of the division, and you will learn a new way, and we will dwell together, and you will have a possession in the land. You will have redemption. You tell me I'm a scam, and Solomon says, if they call you a scam or if they think in any way that you're a scam, mm -hmm. their perversity of the, their ideas in their heart will kill them. So when I say you're going to die, Solomon said it. Continue. And the thoughtlessness of fools destroy them. Your thoughtlessness, your lack of reasoning, your lack of thought. Solomon says, because they don't follow my son who follows in my instruction, who is doing the things that I said to do, this brought their destruction upon them. Okay. Whoever listens to me will dwell in confidence mm. and will rest from fear of evil. So whoever listens, he ends on a good note. So there are those who's going to listen. So never mind the majority. Ignore them. Now I'm talking to those who's listening. It says you'll dwell mm. in confidence. That means you're going to come here. We're going to live together and in confidence, in peace, in safety, in security, and in growing prosperity, we will dwell together and develop. And you will have rest from the fear of evil. Do you know rest from the fear of evil means you going to see it, but it doesn't come close to you. Abraham and Lot both experienced the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, indeed. Abraham saw it from the mountain, but he was safe. Mm -hmm. Lot was running out with fire on his tail. Mm -hmm. And his wife would get turned into a pillar of salt and he had to keep going with his daughters. Mm. They both witnessed it. Yes, they did. Lot was in the destruction. Mm. In this situation, I'm Abraham. You Lot. Not me. <laughs> oh 
You in Sodom and Gomorrah, you lot. The destruction is coming. And you're going to watch people die. You're going to see the destruction. I'm telling you when to get out and how to get out. The same way the angels came to Lot, I'm coming to you to tell you this is what the Most High has decreed for this time. <laughs> so, I want you to understand if you turn from these paths of wickedness, right? You don't mock. You don't remain simple. You adhere to the advice, no matter how crazy it seems to everyone else around you. And you get out of all of these wicked agreements, right? And maybe you do take a loan, but you bring that loan with you and you leave the debt behind. Right? You leave all the debts, all this behind, and you gather up all the money you can from every place that you can, and you come. Right? And you accept this correction. You accept this teachings, because there's more to come. This don't end here. With joy and gladness, then the spirit of wisdom is poured out upon you. Right? And the sayings of the wise and the Proverbs will give you good sense. Mm. If you ignore this invitation, mm. not desiring to accept the appointment or refusing the class or the Council of Solomon, which I am teaching you, there's nothing but calamity and misfortune coming. Okay? Mm -hmm. You suffering from your own decision. Mm. You have perverseness in not accepting what I'm teaching you today. You're perverse. Mm. Those who accept and listen to this instruction will dwell in the land and rest from fear. These are the final points of a chapter one. All of that, chapter one, is here. And I took it out and placed it in simple so that you understand the sayings and everything and you can follow and read and check for yourself. Chapter two, go ahead. My son, if you receive my words and hide away with you my commands. So this is my instruction. If I receive his words, if I accept them and hide them. Yes. Right? And hide and hide hide these commands. What else do I have to do? And incline, oh. Mm -hmm, go and on. incline your ear to wisdom. And I have to listen and hear it for myself first. And do what? And turn your heart to understanding. And I have to love this instruction to do it for myself. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Wow. <laughs> and do what? And call intelligence your mother. This saying, call intelligence your mother. You know how you love your mother? Yeah. You have to love intelligence. And people who are intelligent. Mm, mm. Right? Yeah. So turn away from the fools. Love those who will walk in this understanding. Love those who will walk in this instruction. As I would love my mother. Why? Because there's senior women coming. The age of my mother, 
If they follow this instruction, they have exercised intelligence. Love them. Mm-mm-mm-mm. We'll be right back. Understand. Yeah, read that all out. And call intelligence your mother and call for understanding. Ask for understanding. Meaning, I don't understand, but I'm going to obey regardless to whether I understand now or not. Understanding does not stop me from walking in the instruction, I will gain understanding in the path, in the way, as I go. And seek it. See? So I I don't have, I don't understand, but I have to go this way, so I'm going to go anyway. And along the way, I'm looking to gain the understanding. I'm looking for the end of the road. I'm looking for the completion of that which was promised in these instructions. Mm, mm, mm. The same way I would seek for money. The same way I seek for wealth or treasure because I need money and wealth and treasure to have prosperity and to be Um, financially secured to buy and to build that which is needed. But above all else, the understanding and the instruction is more important than the money because the most high will cause people to give. So the instruction was my priority. The money in the giving is your priority After I obtain the instruction, which shows you the sequence of events. My son, do this. It is a seven-year study for you. In your eighth year, when you've obtained cleanness, go to the people and instruct them in what to do. And the spirit of prophecy will fall on those who hear and obey. Not those who hear and may want to change it. Not those who hear, have it, and then delay to do it or give it. That's another thing. Continue. Oh, and seek it out like treasures. Then you will understand the fear of Allah. Then you, the son will understand the fear of Allah. So it took me seven years to understand the fear of Allah. That's how come I'm so readily able to teach it. I I know you don't gain knowing something from someone telling it to you. You don't gain the knowledge of it. And you don't gain the wisdom or the understanding from a long explanation. You're going to have to do something. And if you are unsure in what you're doing, then you're going to have to do it under supervision. Hi, I'm the supervisor. If you come and do what I say in coming here to get here, it will be well with you. I will be here to support and to teach and to guide And we will prosper together. What is it going to cost you? Everything. Because you're going to lose everything from where you are now to gain everything which is to become here. It's going to cost you everything. So the man who has a million, it's going to cost him a million. The man who have hundreds of thousands, it costs him hundreds of thousands. They cost everyone the same. It's going to cost you everything. You cannot bring the Babylon here. What you can bring from Babylon, the wealth of Babylon, must be converted immediately 
right into the possession of the of the land and the things which the Most High says to get for our own prosperity. Mm -hmm. And knowledge from Allah. So you need to get the fear of Allah and knowledge from Allah. You will find. You will find the knowledge from Allah. So now I have gained my knowledge from Allah. This the explanation. I only gained the wisdom and the instructions of what to do and how to do it from Solomon. Mm. So I'm telling you what to do and how to do because I did it first. But the knowledge of the sequence of events and what is coming in this time I gained from Allah. But you don't believe. You don't want this chastisement. You want to know or to act like you know now to make yourself feel important because you feel like this chastisement might be belittling to you. When I tell you this chastisement, not to belittle you, it's to exalt you. You don't accept. Uh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I have no problems letting whoever die. I had come to this reality and understanding many years ago. In my fourth year, I came to this understanding. It's now three years from then. Three years have passed. I'm in the eighth now. <laughs> well, Allah gives wisdom from his mouth, knowledge, and understanding. Allah gives wisdom, and from his mouth, he gives knowledge and understanding. How does the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding come from the mouth of Allah? He's going to tell you what to do, how to do it. You're going to do it and receive the results. In the end, after you receive the results, you're able to make your assessment and see, oh, it has been a good thing that I followed the instructions. Or I wish I had followed the instructions because now misfortune and terror has come upon me. So you receive this in your hearing and doing? It comes from hearing and doing. Okay. Okay. He reserves for the upright glory. And he helped those who walk blamelessly to guard the ways of justice, and he guards the ways of the righteous. So the Mosai says he reserves, right? Meaning he's going to preserve the upright. How? Who made them upright? Are they upright because they believe? No. Are they upright because they say they accept? Yeah. No, the only sign of acceptance is the obedience, the doing, the giving what is required for and doing the work that is necessary. That is all. Other than that, you're just lying. And we can see right through you. Sell everything that you have here. And if you can borrow or take out a loan, take out the loan, borrow it, and send it and come in five weeks. See? You have a direct instruction. You're coming in this time. Okay? If you get the money anytime in this time, if you cannot send it here, bring it with you with the high priest. He is there for this purpose. right and he helps those who walk blamelessly meaning if you are not requiring right if you are stumbling and, and having struggles and, and issues you doing something wrong you saying something wrong in your heart you need to check yourself because the most high will help you if you are blameless what? Meaning you're not doing anything that should be chastised. You're not thinking about me like I'm some crook or some criminal. 
Because everything I'm doing, I'm doing it because he commanded me to do this for you. For your preservation of life. So if you don't do what I'm asking you and you don't give for your own self, who are you giving for? Who are you giving to? <laughs> to guard the ways of justice. You know, the, the ways of justice do not require security. What this saying is telling you is for you to learn how to enforce justice upon yourself, then upon your children, and from there upon your neighbors. And the Most High guards, or He now, instructs you in the ways, the paths of righteousness. He gives you the instructions to do what He will that's pleasing to Him. And He says, This is righteous. I told them to do that. It's a good thing. After you follow the instructions, what does Solomon say? When I say the instruction, I mean these. The giving, the coming, the, 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 the selling of all your goods, and, the, so and giving the money for the purchasing of the land here, and the coming in the next five weeks, not within, like after. Right? You have a whole month. You got five weeks to give, and then come after. Mm -hmm. Then you will understand justice. Oh, after doing it, when you get here, then you will understand justice. And what else? And, and judgment. And judgment. And wait, wait, wait. Take time out. Do you understand? Without the doing, you don't understand justice and judgment. You just die because of the perversity of your thoughts. If you do what I'm telling you to do right now, you understand justice and judgment. Whose judgment? The most high's judgment of who he is with and why you have to remain loyal and keep your integrity to follow the rest of the instructions for the rest of the journey. Because it don't end because you got here. Mm. And what? And the uprightness of all good ways. So you don't get even in the good way. You don't take this initial first step. So to understand all the good ways, you have to start learning where to get your instruction from. From he Solomon said, from my son. Yeah. Do this first, then go to them. I followed the instruction. Mm. If wisdom enters your heart mm -hmm. and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, good counsel will keep watch over you. So if wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, meaning that if following these instructions are good to you, the giving the coming, accepting what you're going to lose and letting it go, accepting the people you're going to lose and letting them go. If this is pleasant to you, right, then wisdom has entered your heart and, and you do it, then knowledge is pleasant to your soul, then good counsel will watch over you. You will come under the governing body and the, uh, of righteousness, those who have good sense, good counsel, and they will continue to give you good counsel for the preservation of your life, for the prosperity of your family and your household continuing to move forward. Mm -hmm. Well, keep watch over you and over you, understanding will keep you. Mm. 
So understanding will keep you, which it doesn't end there. It actually goes into to the next verse that you may be delivered from an evil path and from the man who speaks perverse words. Why? There is somebody, a man who is telling you, no, it doesn't really go this way. It doesn't really work like that. Those are perverse words. I'm telling you exactly what the Most High is saying. And this is exactly what's happening in this time. And you are exactly here at exactly the right time to escape. Now you can listen to them. And there's a lot of them. And because they are many, you might go with the many down to the pit of hell where they're going. Or you can listen to good counsel and escape and have a possession in the land of your fathers. Mm, 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 mm. Understanding after you have done it, this will keep you from the evil path, which you are already on where you are. What you are already doing automatically is an evil path. It's automatic. Okay. I was in Babylon. I was doing it too. What? I hated it and I knew I had to get out and I prayed every day for the opportunity to get out, but I had to complete a task. There was an instruction. So it was righteousness. And I got out the moment the opportunity came and I gave what money I had to give for me to get out. And I'm telling you, this is the way in the process. It works the same for us all. But now you can't come out and come in to rent. You will not survive as a people like this. Right. So we have to have a possession so we can accept you and not charge you rent. We have to have an establishment of business, of commerce, so that we can continue to provide for you your personal needs and belongings. And then we have to continue to grow, to become self-sufficient, to feed ourselves. And then we can let the strangers come eat with us because we're not eating with them. They are poison themselves. Yes. And their own people, we're not eating with them. Continue. Me, sir? Yes. Okay. Those who leave upright path and go on the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and rejoice in wicked perversions, whose ways are twisted and whose paths are bent. Pause. So, those who lead the upright path go on ways of darkness. That's the end of that statement. Yes. <laughs> so, you don't come here and work with me. You're not coming into the light. You're not working with the light. You're going to continue in the ways of darkness. You're going to continue in the Babylonian way. You're going to continue in the ways you've been doing because they've sufficed you until now to your death. Right? There'll be no salvation for you. You're going to die, and you're going to watch your lineage die too. End the story. Yes. <laughs> right? And the reason behind this is because you rejoiced in doing evil, you rejoiced in wicked perversion. Right? You rejoiced in it. What? You're trying to preserve the wicked son who's not doing right. You're trying to preserve the wicked daughter who, who's still outdoing the wickedness that she's doing. What you want? You want to support them in hopes that they can extend their life and maybe turn it around in the future when the truth of the matter is if they had faced the judgment and the punishment without you getting in the way, trying to in inhibit, they would have turned around long time ago. You're the wicked one in the way. Trying to preserve wickedness. Oh, I love them. No, you don't. You want them to die because you're helping them to die because you're not walking in righteousness. That you may be delivered from the strange woman, from the alien 
whose words are sweet. So the most I'm not talking about <sighs> the out of space people here. No, it's not. Right? As men, this is going to hit home for you. So all of us men from the stock of Jacob, right? Especially the, 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 the pure bloods, us pure bloods. I'm not talking about you half-breeds. You, you, you can't inherit no way. So the pure bloods who will come back for an inheritance, Most High is telling you straight, hey, you know what? You need deliverance from these strange women. What's a strange woman? This is a woman who lives outside the customs and traditions, who likes, loves, appreciates, or sees goodness in the legal systems of Babylon, right? Or supports the illegal things they do in Babylon, right? This is a strange woman. She don't want to walk in the law, customs, and the traditions on any amount of uprightness or righteousness in the land. She don't want to put on a hijab. She don't want to give to the building of the sanctuary. She don't want to come. Right? She don't want to purge of her filth and take a righteous and upright husband and build a family. She don't want to have sister wives. She don't want, she don't want. That's a strange woman. The strange woman is also a woman who is not of your father's house. Right? But in this case, it even specifies that by calling her a foreign or an alien woman. Yeah, oh, she's white. Well, she's a mixed. Yeah? That's what you picking from? Nah, you can't come in with that. Right? So you have to divorce her or leave her and leave her there and abandon ship and you can come. Oh, yeah, it's hard, right? Don't worry. Ezra had to do the same thing. You have to put away the wives which are unfit, the strange and the alien woman. Right, Solomon said it too, Ezra said it, and now you know this is ratified by multiple witnesses. No, don't bring your mixed woman here. Well, the strangers, stop talking to me about strangers. I'm telling you right now, as the son of Israel, we're not even dealing with the strangers until after they get what they get from the Most High, and the survivors come, and they got to bring their gold from their kings and their kings in chains to show that they are submitting to the instruction of the Most High in that time. Your instruction is right now. Theirs is next. There's an order to things. Got to clean up the house and get it ready before we can accept guests. Yes. See, that's an enigmatic saying of mine. Yes. Now, Solomon going to say it different, but <laughs> that's, my, that's the way I say it. But it's the same thing. You got to clean up the house and get it prepared and ready before you accept guests. So now I'm cleaning up house. Mm. So you got to be delivered from the strange women. She cannot come with you into this. Mm. Right? What happens next? From the alien who words are sweet, who abandons the training of her youth and forgets the covenant of Allah. See, I told you. So she's abandoned the training, which is the traditions and customs of Sarah and Rachel and how they live their lives. You look down upon them when they're actually telling you to do this because they want you to do it. It was beneficial for them. Right. Rachel wanted Leah to marry Jacob. Sarah wanted Abraham to marry Hagar and to take concubines to wives to expand his nation, to make them a many people. They wanted it, and it worked out for their benefit. She only wanted peace between her, her sister, and their sons because they are brothers dwelling together. So you don't want to walk in this. You don't want sister wives. 
You don't want to put on the traditional garments. You don't want to learn the new customs and traditions. You want to keep dating. You want to this. You don't want to do the Redeemer Kinsman law. Right? You want virgins to go out and fornicate. You don't want them getting into marriages immediately. You don't want to do arranged marriages. This is a strange woman. She has forgotten the covenant of Allah. Whose house is in the valley of death. And that's where her house is. You go down to this woman's house and you get with her. This woman's house is in the valley of death. Period. That's where your house is. Right now. All of you scattered everywhere. Right? The war started in Africa. Now, uh, the United States and Russia are fighting in Africa, in Sudan, if you want to know what's going on. And now, <laughs> so that's an attachment to the war in Ukraine. They're gearing up for a big fight over in Asia and China and Japan and North Korea and all of that. And everybody's warming up their nukes mm -hmm. so that nobody has the upper hand should they lose. Everybody comes down. Now, they're not aiming on farms. And so our little patch is not on the target list. Okay. However, where you are, you're in mm -hmm. the valley of death. You're not in the valley in the shadow of death. You're in death's face. Mm -hmm. We're all in the valley of death. However... I'm in the shadow. That's what David was talking about. So the wisdom of this saying, David said, yea, though I walk in the valley, in the shadow of death, I don't fear evil. Mm -hmm. Solomon is saying, listen, this is a strange woman. Her house is in the valley of death, in front of death, in the light where he can see. Mm -hmm. You know what death does to the things he can see? He kills it. He brings his sword upon it. The death kills what he sees. Mm -hmm. Death cannot kill what death cannot see. You understand what I'm saying, right? If I put a blind man in a ring, I mean blind, blind, can that blind man defeat Mike Tyson? Mm -mm. Why? What's the blind man's problem? He's blind. He's blind. He cannot see, right? Mm -hmm. So death can't kill me if death can't see me. And death can't see me in his shadow. He does not suspect anyone to be behind his back. Right. Because he's got a million targets he has to work on in right. front of his face. We get to pass by peacefully. Ooh. We'll be back right after this. I want to give you all an example. So a person who comes and starts down this path with us and quits to choose, quits choosing going his own way, right? Because your own way, your own ideas, whatever you think you're going to plan, oh, I build a bunker. Oh, I grow my own food and get my own farm here. Oh, this is, this is always, oh, I'm... This is the way of darkness, right? If you are happy in doing whatever you see fit for yourself, right? You want to enjoy sex out of marriage. You want to enjoy adultery. You want to join and sleep with and be with foreign women and strange women or, right? The unlawful, these are little harlots, little harlotous women, Right? Doing this, if you're a man getting with these situations, if you're a woman who agrees with this situation, right? 
You are abandoning the training which I am presenting to you, which is the training from Allah to learn the fear of Allah, to return back to the covenant and the customs and traditions. You are forgetting the covenant of Allah. Your house is in the valley of death. That's where it is. It's not here because you're not with us. I'm 5,000 miles away from you. You are in the valley of death. Believe me when I tell you. Okay? So you're about to receive an execution. You are before the face of death to be executed. Right? So you want to keep Babel's Nephilim culture. Oh, you may not accept that white people are Nephilim. Oh, oh, oh. Nobody cares what you accept. It, that was never your acceptance was mm. only to be proven by your obedience. Mm. Your words and your comments only deceive you. It comes out of the filth of your heart for your own destruction. So you want to keep Babylon's Nephilim culture and lifestyle and traditions, the Western culture. You're cursed. You're cursed with no peace and death, period. Those who accept instruction, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right? Not the people, right, who do this example of wickedness, but walk in the teachings of this class will survive and continue to dwell on earth. And the evil robbers... That's you who is supporting all of this wickedness, right? You support the government and, and, and how people prosper and all this usury and all of this. They call it riba here, right? You support this stuff. You think it's okay if you get your money legally. It's all right if you do. The legals are legal crooks. And the illegals are just illegal crooks. It is all wickedness. It is not according to the law. So if you agree with that, your house is in the house of death. If you disagree, and you're going to come here and work and live and do, this is good. Right? That's the point. That's chapter one and chapter two. Continue. Let's, let's finish up the reading. And to the giants. And so this is to the giants. So now Solomon's telling you, the right? The strange woman. <laughs> the strange woman, she forgets the covenant of Allah, whose house is in the valley of death, and to the giants is the way of her path. She is walking in the Nephilim way. Solomon said it. There's only two paths on this earth. The Nephilim path, well, everybody else is doing it, right? The Chinese are doing it, the Philippines, the Australians, the South Americans, the Africans, the Europeans, mm. right? They all on the Nephilim path. Even here, they adopted some of the Nephilim path. However, we're not supposed to be on none of that at all. We have our own way. So now that I'm telling you our own way and what we have to do and what we have to buy, and how we have to start breeding up the animals and collecting what we need to collect and transferring what we need to transfer and bringing in and joining in with the families we're supposed to join with. You keep trying to tell me I'm doing things wrong. You want to get rich tomorrow and not survive tomorrow. Survival first. Prosperity and wealth comes after survival in the process of surviving. So this is, she walks in the way of giants, Nephilim way. None who enter will return in peace. So you get down there, you go into this woman's house who's living like this, because that's where all the women are right now. All of you are in Babel or doing Babylonian things. It says you go into these women's house and you join with them, you men. None of you will get any peace. Nor will they capture the ways of life. And you will not obtain the life that we will obtain in our obedience here. Mm. 
so that you may walk in the ways of the good. Right. So the purpose of this class, of this instruction, is for you to change your heart, change your mind, change your perception, change your reasonings to work with us, to give to us, to come live with us so that you can walk in the ways of the good so that you will keep the paths of the righteous, right? Walking in the righteousness and making the path of wickedness desolate. You see, right? That's what it says, right? Read it. Yes. Nor would they capture it. So that you may walk in the ways of the good and guard the paths of the righteous. For the upright will dwell on the earth. Okay, I'm telling you right now, anyone, be you of the house of Abraham or not, who follows this teaching, who does the things which are lawful and right, giving and whatever, coming out in the time that is necessary for you to come, you will live on this earth. Everyone else, you will die. Continue. For the upright will dwell on the earth, and those who are blameless will be left in it. Will be left in it. Mm -hmm. So this is the great rapture. <laughs> Ooh. That the religion with the two sticks was talking about. Yeah, you go into heaven, you're not. You go into the grave, you're going to hell, you're going to die. And those who are righteous will be remain and live and dwell in it. This is what's coming right now. When this war comes, the great population fall down. We start over, reset, just like Noah. Except for us keeping these laws, keeping these traditions, doing what he said, where he said to do it. You following my instruction, following my leadership, being loyal and keeping your integrity to do what is asked, not turning to the right or to the left. You will inherit the earth. Hmm. And what will happen to the wicked read? And the evil will cease from the earth and robbers will be uprooted from them. All righty. You heard it from Solomon first. So this is chapters one and two, right? Of this class. Everybody got uh, their little notes? Yes. We're going to stop. We're going to get something to eat. We'll see you guys next time with chapter three. We'll start there. We'll see where we end depending on how things flow. Hey. Five weeks is a long enough time for you to settle your business affairs and get your funds and finances in order. You know what I'm saying? And be prepared to give for the building of the sanctuary and for taking possession of the land. We have to pay for it in full. We have to own it. Otherwise, you will not have survival when the terror comes upon you. Now, I already got a backup plan because of you rebels. I was already promised and prophesied about where my backup plan is and how it's going to flow and how it's going to work. Because you rebels are going to end up going through this wickedness. And then the day you call, I will not answer. You will look for me and you will not find me. I will be in the shadow of death when death is smiting you face to face.
You want to meet El Shadi, El Shaddai, the God who destroys and then repents. When he said he is coming, he is coming to break things. Then tell us to fix it. I'm telling you right now. Sir. Yes. This <laughs> so. The Stellas mm -hmm. are going to be destroyed. All the Stellas getting their groove back, going to be grooving their way down to hell. They're the strange women. they all strange. Then the Passport, passport, um, passport, passport Bros. Bros destroyed. destroyed. Out. Destroyed. Most I don't want them neither. And those who have been working towards the rapture, the robbers, they they, they get destroyed. Gone. They destroyed those who work with the government. Destroyed those who try to live good and not break the law and be legal. Destroyed. If you're not here working with us, giving to the building with us and coming to the to do the work and to actually build and to change yourself to learn this and live this lifestyle and this culture, which you are seeing in front of you today. You will die. You will be destroyed. There is no question about it. And the only time you're going to actually move to do anything is when the next problem hit you. And it's coming rapidly, especially you of the house of Jacob. You've been mighty quiet. You've been mighty quiet. Trying to get everything. Yeah, I can actually print out the little, the little book for you if you like. What book? That's why I typed this up. I already went through this, so you know. Oh no, that's just my own personal knowledge. So I know what that word means. Mm, okay, I mean you got your definition. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. You got anything you want to say to anybody? Mm -hmm. So now, finally, everybody's about to get what you've been seeing for seven years. Mm -hmm. They're about to get it. Mm -hmm. Got anything you want to say to them? Mm -hmm. any, any, any advisement? I said that the last class we did. Any advisement? Because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, when this comes, I'm going I'm to mock you. I'm going to scoff. I'm going to laugh. No, you you took your money and you want this and you was out getting the bag and you didn't want to leave the son and now he's dead. You didn't want to leave this daughter and now she's dead. You didn't want these children to come out but they wanted to come and now you dead and they abandoned in the wilderness. What you want somebody to do? <laughs> but if I had known this was coming like this, I'd have done it, man. You didn't say it was going to be like this. Yes, I did. I'm telling you right now it's going to be like that. Oh, the bomb hit, man. Like a million people died, man. Uh-huh. You're going to get it. This is what's coming. You got five weeks to give. For the building of the sanctuary so we could buy the land for you so you can arrive and go to the land when you come after five weeks. When you start arriving after five weeks, there's plenty of stuff we have to do. We have to get outfits and clothes. There's a lot of things have to be gotten. So we need a great offering. And this message is going to be hidden. Hmm. And if you don't come and you don't learn from me, and if you don't come and you don't accept what I'm teaching, this correction, I'm telling you right now, there's no hope. If you come and you got it already, you're going to end up getting put out and we don't care what you gave. You're getting put out. Anybody who gets put out is getting put out. They're going to their own depths. There is no hope for them, period. Right? Because it's private property. Private. We, we, you don't accept our laws. We have a law. And I'm telling you what it is. We have commands that we follow day to day. And it's all for our benefit in the development of the kingdom and the development 
of the land and the development of the people. This is development. So now you don't accept die. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's where it's at. Pretty much. Oh, my son died. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. My daughter, my daughter. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, I was trying to get out there. I got the tickets. They won't let me at the airport. What you want me to do? Mm-hmm. You should have came at the appointed time. Nobody told you to try to wait until September. To wait until August. Wait until the last minute. And then the door closed for you. You don't know when your mercy ends. The Most High is already sick of the wickedness and perversity that we have displayed before him. That's why the time is over. Because righteousness has blossomed. I have done the requirements that Solomon asked for for my father's house and received the commandment, the ordinance of redemption for myself, my family, and then to extend it to you as a share with the command and the authority under the seal of Solomon to exercise judgment over you, having completed the process. Because during my process, you did not believe. Now, judgment coming. And it's getting ready to hit you suddenly. Because even though I say it, you don't believe what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. When it comes... It's not going to be like watching these little UFOs and these little balloon sightings and got y'all all excited for the rapture. When that nuclear bomb hit, it's going to be a rapture, all right. A whole lot of people going to turn to dust. And a whole lot of people going to be sick from the radiation poisoning. That's a whole nother pestilence. Mm-hmm. Not to mention all the disease and the and what come from all the rotting flesh. And the stench. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Some of you going to turn to an instant shadow. Oh. You know, the nuclear that yeah. uh, hit you, it leave a shadow. Mm-hmm. You standing here, but the light don't hit here in your shadow. And then leave you shadow there. Permanent. Wow. Permanent mm-hmm. shadow. Mm-hmm. This is what's coming to you. I'm telling you, you're going to see this this year. Right? We're going to, I'm telling you when the Pesach is, because this is the year of the redemption, this next one. So some will survive, but it will be none that I know. Because if you knew about me and you heard from me and you didn't do what I asked you to do, the Most High is getting rid of you. Mm-hmm. I'll get another people. Refusal of what I'm teaching right now is instant death. Do as you like. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I don't call nobody. You know, mm-hmm. the only person I call is my brother, mm-hmm. right? Yes, sir. Because he has to receive and hear from me regularly, day to day. He cannot go too far or too much without instruction. Mm-hmm. But I am the principal. He understands it. Mm-hmm. No, don't worry. You figure it out. All right. <clears throat> How you doing over here? Good. You got all your notes. Yeah. I was, you know. Let's say bye to the people. Bye. How about you? You done? Let's see you guys next time. All right? Chapter 3 is coming up next.